Welcome everyone. In the previous lecture we had looked at the Kalman filter which provided us a way of estimating the, uh, the state of a linear system, a system that evolved linearly uh, and was disturbed by Gaussian noise. Uh, and where we were getting observations which were linear functions of the state again corrupted by Ga Gaussian noise. The reason we started looking at Kalman filter and more, more generally filtering problems was because our because we, ha we looked we had come to the point where we were studying this the linear quadratic uh, uh, problem with partial state information and there we found that the optimal controller is a linear function of this estimate of the state. This is the, be the best estimate of the state given the information right. And this we said uh, while, the the, while the controller LK could be computed recursively using the Riccati equations and so on, this how to compute this remained uh, re was something that uh, was not addressed by that at that time. Uh, and so the way to recursively compute this was through uh, filter. So we got into filtering then then we specifically got into the, the Kalman filter where when the noise was Gaussian. So now putting all this together we can we can describe what the complete solution to a to a linear quadratic Gaussian problem is. So a linear quadratic Gaussian problem would be one where this this noise W k and this noise V k these are also Gaussian with and with uh, with, uh, with mean 0 and they are independent Gaussians and the initial state is also Gaussian. So, so a linear quadratic Gaussian problem that is one where your state evolves as xk plus 1 equal to ak xk plus bk uk plus wk. You get observations yk equal to ck xk plus vk and your x0 w0 to wn minus 1 uh, and v0 to vn minus 1 these are all independent and Gaussian. So remember in the earlier problem when we looked at just the linear quadratic problem the there was no particular assumption about the about the variance of the of these of this noise right we, we just we only had that uh, the uh, we, we only assumed that these were independent these were only independent with uh, with zero mean we did not assume anything specific about the distribution also the initial state was some something given to uh, was a, its distribution was given to us again we did not assume anything specific about that distribution but now we will assume that these are independent and gaussian uh, in this particular problem and that gives you the linear quadratic Gaussian problem. Now with, with any dis, if you had any distribution for, uh, for, uh, for uh, if you so long as these were uh, 0 mean and independent but not necessarily Gaussian there also we knew that we had found that the optimal control u k star was equal to mu k star of i k this was always a fun something of this form it was lk times conditional expectation of xk given ik right so this this holds holds for any any noise and by any means i mean zero zero mean independent So this holds for any distribution. We do not need the Gaussian uh, assumption for this particular uh, for, the, for this particular result. We need the Gaussian assumption in order to now compute this, this quantity efficiently right. So Gaussian the Gaussian assumption is used in this in computing this. So Gaussian 
used in computing this efficiently or recursively. All right. So, this is where the Gaussian assumption is used. Now, what, what is the implication of, uh, of the Gaussian assumption? Well, that it this in fact can be computed through the Kalman filter that comes through from the Kalman filter and the Kalman filter itself has a very nice form that we that we discussed in the previous class. All right. So, now the main thing that we uh, that we will discuss in today's class is that this particular this 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 expectation here what is the form of this as a function of i k. Remember i k here is all the observations up until time k and all the actions up until the previous time instant. So, what what is the form what is the form of the form of expectation of x k given i k. So, if you go back now for this we need to just go back and glance at some of the earlier some of the results we had earlier stated. See remember we had we had mentioned this one particular fact that when you are that whenever you are estimating a a uh, a the state given uh, given some information all right this this estimate turns uh, and 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 the information and the state were all jointly gaussian then the estimate turns out to be a linear function of the information now in our case also the 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 state and the information that we have is are jointly gaussian that's because they are all eventually determined by the distribution of of the of the noise in the system and or uh, and the initial state right so they are all linear combinations of the initial state and the noise in the system so consequently the state itself is some gaussian and uh, and the the uh, the uh, the uh, the estimate also is gaussian right now this this basically tells us that this particular estimate that we are deriving here this is the conditional conditional expectation of x k given i k this itself is a linear function of i k. So, this given i k is linear function function on i k. So, which means it is a linear function of all the information that you have. So, which is uh, which is this this particular vector. Now, if this is a linear function of i k remember outside we are up we are applying after this a control which is also linear which is a linear multiple of of this particular term right. So, you are applying uh, uh, something which is a linear fun which is a linear multiple which is which is a linear transformation of this particular state. So, consequently this here all right this 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 uh, this quantity here is also a, a linear function of i k. So, which means u star here is if I view it as a function of i k directly remember it is eventually a function of i k after all. So, it is but it is here it is written in terms of the conditional expectation of x k given i k, but the important thing is this because the conditional expectation is itself linear in i k you have uh, u star which is l k times that conditional expectation. So, therefore, u star is also a linear function of i k. So, in other words we can think that we can consider u k star, u k star equal to mu k, mu k star of i k where mu k star is a linear function. This is the beauty of this problem. So, what we have seen is that eventually the pro once the pro once the for a linear quadratic uh, Gaussian problem your optimal control is a linear function of the information right. 
So, and in fact it is uh, it is given in terms of the conditional expectation of the state given the information. So, to recap let us let us once again see what which assumptions are used where to get that the optimal control is linear in the conditional expectation of the state given the information we do not need any we do not need any linear we do not need any Gaussian assumption on the noise. So, this the highlighted equation here this holds for any noise distribution ok. The uh, if we if you now further want to claim that this is linear in i k right if it, if you want to further claim that this is linear in i k then we need the Gaussian assumption. So, when we have Gaussian assumption we get that uh, as once we have Gaussian assumption conditional expectation of x k given i k is linear and then therefore, as a result of that u k is also linear in i k right. Here uh, u k is linear in expect in the conditional expectation of the state given i k that holds for any noise any noise distribution ok. I hope that is clear all right. So, now uh, so, so you can see so let me summarize these. So, we we always we have for any we have for any L q problem u k star is linear function conditional expectation of the state given information all right we have now for lqg problem uk star to be linear function of ik since this here is the linear function of i k. So, this is the summary. Now, here is something that so, so with this summary we now need to look at the prob problems with partially observed state in a in 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 a little uh, in a slightly more mature light. So, notice that we uh, we we the way we approach problems of uh, with uh, with partial state information or with imperfect state information was by considering the information vector as as the state. So, we said that we can just think of i k itself as a state and uh, think of any new observations that are coming in as some as as noise and and then keep updating this uh, as a state vector and that way then we got another form of uh, of of uh, what looked like basically a perfectly observed uh, observed system and then we said we let's write out the uh, let's write out the bellman equation for that system and based on that we we produced we got we wrote out uh, the dynamic programming equations and got an optimal control uh, we said that the optimal control can be uh, computed through the dynamic programming equations as a function of i k. Now, the problem with this this approach right. So, this this approach which is wherein we uh, so the standard up, so the approach so far approach to that we have taken so far approach to partially observed problems. is take i k to be the state take the state as i k then then uh, the uh, take the uh, then and y k or I had not uh, earlier my notation was z k I think this is either of these is ok for the observe in short the observation as is is as as noise and then write and then from here 
you get a perfectly observed system. And from the perfectly observed system, we apply dynamic DP equation and compute the optimal policy mu k star of i k, mu k star is a function of, of, of the information. But we had seen a challenge pertaining to this in one of our earlier lectures. We had seen how this the, the difficulty that uh, this entails is is the is that our state space keeps blowing up with time right which the, the state vector itself gets longer with time because we we make we have more and more observations with time and we have uh, a longer and longer history as as time goes on so the state vector keeps growing longer so the difficulty is difficulty state vector keeps growing growing with time okay so this is the this is the difficulty that we have with this uh, in this particular approach however if you see the uh, result that we have just got for uh, for linear quadratic problems there is something here which hints that this approach can be simplified. So, if you see the the from the L, from the linear quadratic problem, we have got without even making the Gaussian noise assumption, we have got that the optimal control is a linear function is a linear function of the conditional expectation of the state given the information. Right. So, we it's we are not really taking here. It, we are not simply saying that the uh, the optimal control is a function of the information. We are saying it's a function of something much more specific, which is the conditional expectation of the state given the information. So this here is something that we have derived from the information. It's a, a piece of information that has that we have derived from I k, and it turns out that it is enough for us to define the optimal control. So. A, the optimal control morally is only a function of i k that is that is as per the definition. But it turns out that it is in fact a much more specific function in the sense that it is a function of only some some part of the information that is available in i k. And that that information is simply the conditional expectation of the state given the information right so given given i k. So, in other words so here this motivates the following concept and the concept is called sufficient statistics sufficient statistic is that piece of that piece of information piece of information in ik that is sufficient to compute u k and then eventually also j k or j k uh, j, j k and more generally j 0 of j 0 of pi 0. So, it is it is so sufficient statistic is that that bit of information within i k which is sufficient to for us to compute the optimal control and thereby the value functions or the cost to go and and the uh, and the eventual optimal value of the problem optimal cost of the problem so this this here is the thing that we that uh, the uh, that the control can really be made a function of so in general the fun control is a function of just ik but but if we can if we derive a, a, from this a sufficient from i k a sufficient statistic then we can simplify that uh, our, our, our exploration by saying what should be the control made what can the control be made a function of well it should be made a function of that particular sufficient statistic. So, so it is that piece of information in i k that is sufficient for us for computing uh, computing uh, computing these 
these quantity. So, for the LQ problem for the LQ problem it turns out that the sufficient statistic sufficient statistic is is this this particular thing right. So, the, the linear quadratic problem this is our sufficient statistic you just need to know the conditional mean of of the state given the information right. So, only the mean of x k given the info given i k is needed to compute u k star. Remember i k as a, as a vector of random variables has, a, has can, uh, can be used to derive many different uh, different pieces of information or many different other random variables right. These, these, this is just one of them one of the random variables that can be derived from here this one here the conditional expectation of x k given i k is just one of the random variables that you can derive from i k. But it turns out that that is sufficient for us to compute the optimal action in this particular problem. Now, the uh, in the in the LQG problem, it further happens that this this itself, the sufficient statistic itself, can further be computed in a recursive form. That's the further simplification that happens in the LQG problem. The sufficient statistic does not change. The sufficient statistic is still the conditional expectation of state given uh, given the information, but it is uh, it the the sufficient statistic itself can be computed uh, computed easily thanks to, uh, thanks to the gaussian nature of the noise now what what the what, what is the all of this telling us this is telling us that there should be a way for us to to approach problems with partial state information without having to uh, having to write the the state uh, as as the information vector because then the state becomes too large and it, the problem becomes too complicated so then the question for us then is what is the right universal sufficient is there what is the right sufficient statistic now this here the conditional expectation of this of the of the state given the information this was the sufficient statistic for the lq problem this is not necessarily the sufficient statistic for every problem if you go back to the first lecture of our course we had seen that the mean does not always capture all the information that we can get about a random variable and the same lesson is 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 there here too because the mean uh, of this may not always may not always be enough it just happens to be the case that in linear quadratic problems the mean uh, the mean of the state given the information is sufficient it is the sufficient statistic now the question then arises as to what can what is are the uh, the un, what is the sufficient statistic then for every problem and is there even such a thing as a universal sufficient statistic which can be used for every every particular every problem uh, every class of problems so this this is something we will we will discuss in the next class